Welcome to Next Gen Talk. In today's special episode, we're joined by the incredible Sally Cravens, sharing an expert insight on solo traveling in Europe for women. Get ready to embark on a journey of discovery as Sally reveals her top tips, advice, and must-know insights for navigating the wonders of Europe solo. But that's not all. So this episode is dedicated to a dear friend, coach, and mentor to many, Peter Beckman. Facing unimaginable hardship, he lost his wife just 12 months ago to kidney and heart failure. Now, his 28 years old daughter is battling the same issue, and he needs our help. If you're watching this recorded episode on YouTube, click on the GoFundMe link below and donate any amount you can. Your generosity will make a world of difference. For listeners on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, or any other outlets, the link will be available on the Next Gen Talk Facebook page. Together, let's make a difference. Your kindness and support will be greatly appreciated. Enjoy this episode, guys. Hi, everyone. My name is Alpha Freeman, and welcome to the Next Generation Business Talk. I'm really excited to have you guys on board today. Welcome, welcome. As you can see, it's nighttime here in Frankfurt, Germany. However, my guest is from the other side of the continent, other side of the world, all the way out there in Hawaii. You know, it's dark right now for me. It's 12 o'clock at night, but it's 12 p.m. over there in Hawaii. Okay, guys, I'm excited to share with you the guests that I have on board. You know, but before we get started, hit that like, subscribe, so I can do more of these shows, so I can have more of these events coming up, guys. Like, subscribe, add, share. You know, click the button on the, on the drop down below to make sure you like, subscribe, share the following information, all right? Don't need no further introductory. I have Miss Sally on board today. She's gonna to talk to us a lot about traveling all around the world, you know, and all the information that she has to share for us. Guys, take notes, listen very carefully. She's an amazing, wonderful woman. It has so much story and so much to offer to us, all right? Welcome on board, Miss Sally. Welcome, welcome. Aloha, aloha from Kauai, one of the islands of the Hawaiian island chains. Perfect, perfect. And how you been? How was everything? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, let me see. I, uh, I'm uh, a retired, semi-retired uh, woman. Uh, I, um, well, was born and raised in the Philippines, but came to the United States in the uh, my late teens, and uh, uh, have uh, I, uh, went to educated myself. Um, I have a, I have a degree in journalism and worked in newspapers over the years, uh, mainly in the advertising end of it. But also in the publishing side, I published my own publication in uh, Vista, California. I lived in uh, California, actually, um, I would say about uh, almost 30 years of my life. Um, and so I pretty much called that as my hometown there in uh, North San Diego County of California. And uh, yeah, I have a, a daughter who lives in New York, a couple of granddaughters, uh, one actually is in Yale um, uh, and uh, getting her master's degree in environmental science. Mm-hmm. And I have um, a 12 year old granddaughter as well. And um, right now I'm uh, doing work as a part time assistant teacher at a middle school here in Kauai. But I love to travel. So that's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what a beautiful story. It's like, it's amazing to see how much you accomplished over the years. You know, to have family, granddaughters all around the world doing amazing things, some top prestigious schools all around the country in the United States, you know, and I'm just happy to luck. I just happen to luck out, honestly, to run into you um, throughout my journey. And you happen to met me here in Frankfurt, Germany. And that's the amazing thing about it. We met here in Germany. Uh, we stayed in contact over the past couple of weeks. And I was like, hey, I have this amazing show. I would love to have you on board because I think people should know what you're doing. And it's amazing to see the fact that you're getting up, stepping outside your comfort zone, just traveling all around the world. And please tell yeah. us what went to this, you know, what made you just to get out there and just do it by yourself? Yeah, well, um, let me see. I've uh, done some traveling early on um, as well, not just this last couple of years or so. Um, in the, let me see, where, when would be my first, actually outside of the United States from the Philippines, then came to um, United States, uh, gone to like uh, Tijuana, you know, Mexico, uh, Cabo San Lucas, that part of West West Coast uh, of uh, United States, because it's just actually outside a uh, border, just uh, south of the border of uh, California. 
and then of also um, during the um, uh, millennial before the the, the 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 turn of the century, 1999, we decided to go to Lin uh, London, and uh, since we were already in London, I told my husband then I said, um, you know, let's go to uh, to Paris since we're already here. You know, it's only so many hours. You know, I think three hours to from uh, Victoria Station to um, to uh, Paris. And so we did that. Um, and then um, uh, I think uh, the, the next uh, country that I went to would be um, Hong Kong outside again of the Philippines because I went home to the Philippines in 2015. And so um, I went to, I, I figured I'm, I'm already on that side of the, of the world. I might as well stop at another country and that's Hong Kong. I have a, a half brother who lives there. And uh, so um, I saw, um, you know, uh, beautiful sights that I've seen in either movies or pictures, you know, um, uh, and, I, and I visited those sites. Um, and then uh, that's, an that's another one of my, that's my first probably solo trip that I did that, um, uh, outside, uh, I, mean, I mean, in a foreign country. And then um, in uh, 2000, I think, uh, when was it, 2020, um, just before the pandemic, I went to Iceland. And um, yeah, and you're talking, I was actually there during the lockdown. Like, uh, I was there supposed to be from March 9th to March 14th. We, the lockdown was March 13th. Um, and so I had to basically scramble. Well, I basically calmly just called the Iceland Air, which was the the the, the airplane that I traveled there and back to Seattle because I my flight was Seattle to Iceland and back to to Seattle. And so I just basically um, asked the 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 customer service to find me another flight. And at first it just happened because I saw the the the, the announcement of the then President Trump on, on TV. I woke up, just happened to woke up in the middle of the night and I saw it and it's, he said something about March 13th. So that was like March 11th, like midnight. And so uh, the, the customer service in Iceland there is there said, we don't even know how to handle this, ma'am. And I said, um, yes, uh, I'll show you how you can handle it, perhaps. My suggestion is that cancel my flight on the 14th and uh, I will pay the rebooking fly, uh, fee because I'm sure there's going to be a fee. And I don't mind. I said, just get me out of here as soon as you can. I don't want to be stuck in Iceland where oh. I don't know anybody. I was solo traveler then. And I just like, I don't want to be stuck there. And um, yeah, and then I just like from then on, went to Montreal and uh, Quebec City and um, to uh, Montreal with, and then Quebec City with a girlfriend of mine. That one, I had my girlfriend go with me. And yeah. then um, 2022 in January or 2023, I went to last, just last year, Ireland. Uh, that was also with an, another woman, but I would have been solo except at the last minute this person joined me. Yeah, but the, the most exciting trip so far that I've taken was last fall when I met you, just this last fall, from, <laughs> from yeah, from October 20, 21st till December 13, I was in Europe and saw 17 and was in 17 countries. Um, and alone. that was like you explained to my audience members, like how is that just traveling alone, the experience itself? Because a lot of people have that that phobia, thinking like, oh man, this is scary. Like I don't know nobody mm -hmm. here. I'm alone. I'm a woman. What do I do? You know, what gave you that sense of strength, that zeal to actually get out there and do this? Like honestly. Well, you know, I feel like life is too short. Mm. Um, you know, I'm not gonna wait around until. Until what, you know, um, uh, we don't know whether we're going to have, we're going to be here the next day. <laughs> Every day is here right. to us. And so I feel like I'd like to do this now while I can physically do it. You know, I'm not 
getting any younger. And um, I just did a lot of research, like um, for instance, when I went to to um, to to Hong Kong, you know, I just uh, I'm sure my my brother was there, and he he recommended some things that that I might want to do. But I know I wanted to go to this particular island, Lantau Island, to see the Grand Buddha, you know, the the statue of the Grand Buddha, and and and, and climb, you know, the stairs to 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 the top of it, and so. I did that. So basically research, I think, um, uh, is the key. When I went to Iceland, I just basically um, looked into tours because I'm by myself. So I choose areas, um, accommodations, hotels that will be more more uh, convenient to my needs. You know, if, if I'm going to a tour, uh, is, the, is the pickup uh, spot going to be close to where I'm going to stay because I didn't rent a car, you know what I'm saying? Uh, or is is there or is there a shuttle from the airport? You know, so I just took like did things like that, you know, just just basically um do your own research, I feel, you know, I mean that's the the computer, the internet is uh, making the world as you can as we're doing right now, you know, a smaller place. Um mm -hmm. And and it's amazing what you just plug in key things, keywords, and the answer is there, you know, and stuff. And so, so that's that's the key to that is just just don't be afraid. People are are generally helpful if they know that you're a visitor, mm -hmm. um, and you know we have to be respectful of their culture. Um, and and I learned a lot. I learned that. English is not necessarily the most spoken, of course, you know, it's the universal language, but not anywhere, everywhere you'll go, people will speak the language, you know, and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I took a bus, a, a bus from in Switzerland, and the bus driver couldn't understand my question. Like, all I was asking is like, is this stopping to this particular town? And he looked at me like, and so thank God there was a passenger that um that understood me and he nodded meaning I took that as a yes so it's like okay thank you you know so um so yeah so it's I interesting was just myself here because this question is I think most of my audience might be thinking about the same thing here what like website or what um come travel agency do you work with to allow you to actually book all these trips at one at a low cost you know more efficient People yeah, thinking, I like, do the same thing you're doing, but like, how do I get on board? You know, what's the what's the secret here? You know? Yeah, yeah I have a link. I have a link that we will share later on. And what it what I did is actually with this last tour to 17 countries, I mm -hmm. did not plan that at all, like ahead no. of time. You know how some 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 uh, uh, ladies or any any travelers actually they'll say oh i see like post in facebook i'm going to to greece in 2025 like you know like 2 years or a year ahead i decided to do this in july i think uh, may june right around there uh, uh unfortunately my uh, my my sister was diagnosed with cancer and um and uh, please pray for her and the stuff. So she's still battling it to this day. Um, and um, so I think on the way back, uh, as I was on the on board the plane, I went and visited uh, her May. And on the way back, uh, I just kind of like I think you you tend to uh, just reevaluate your life, you know, uh, when something like that happened. Um, you know, this is not the first tragedy in my life. Um, I lost a brother already um, uh, in 2000. And Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. And uh, I lost my son in 2011 at the age 22. So uh, I think with all of that, um, you know, you tend to like, okay, so what what am I doing? You know, where, where am I going? Have I accomplished everything that I want to do? You know, how about if, you know? Uh, so so with that in mind, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to quit the job that I had then. 
uh, and and uh, I said, I'm just going to see whether I can find a job where it will allow me to travel, you know. And so um, I um, uh, I planned to the, the trip, but just I listed countries that I might be interested in going. I think I had six on the list, you know. And um, and uh, but then as I was looking at tours and booking and stuff, certain things pop up. Oh, seven day uh, tour to Eastern Europe, seven mm. countries. I'm like, what is this? You know, so I checked that out. So I decided then to book that. And then and then there was another tour uh, with the, the same company that that is going to a different countries, different countries, another week, seven day tour. And so um, so basically I, I made it so that then I can take those two tours and maybe like a few days in Switzerland, you know, like on my own, not mm -hmm. without, not with a tour. And so, um, so I was planning that. And then a friend of mine here in Kauai who travels a lot uh, suggested, hey, how about a cruise? You know, and so, well, I've never done a cruise before. So I said, well, you know, I've never done it, but there's always a first, I suppose. So, okay. So he directed me to this one site that has all these supposedly discounted um, uh, to, uh, cruises. And so I found one that again, worked with my schedule that I thought would go with my schedule. And so, um, so from then on, like I said, things just kind of fell into place. It's amazing how, you know, I did not waste. <laughs> there was no wasted days of the whole 54 days that I was there. Uh, the only time that I was on my own, I believe, was the five days in, in Swiss, Switzerland. It was part of my tour, but I went back there for another five days. It was going to be 13 days, 12 days, something like that. But, but I cut it short because I caught a cold and I didn't want to be in a cold cold place you know and so um so I took another tour instead so that I had three then seven day bus tours I took another tour instead to Italy where it's warmer and so you know you just kind of basically just things fell into place and I think just 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 doing a lot of research and really just making sure that, that that's what you want to do and that um that you know that you're gonna enjoy yourself and stuff, and there's people around. And the, the Buster, what I love about it is there are people with you. And at the right. time, you know, there's a stuff going on. There's a there's a um, there's there are demonstrations, you know, protesters and stuff. And so my friends here in the United States, like, yeah, are you sure you're gonna be safe? You know how that that you know. Right. You're, careful blah, blah blah so I said I will be fine guys you know I'm with a group of people I said and I registered through the um, U.S. government safety uh, there's there's a website where we can register as being abroad we can register ourselves to whatever countries we'll be in and they alert us the U.S. embassy in, in those countries will alert us if there's something that you know something that we need to kind of keep an eye out on and things like that which is great I thought you know so 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 I, so there was always that and and um yeah so it was just like really really fun I met a lot of people yeah. from different countries <laughs> and to this day we still keep in touch they're like became my family and stuff yeah. What would you say the, your favorite country that you traveled through um, this past this past couple months um, in Europe that you, that just blew you away that you were looking back as like man that's pretty cool and amazing. Um, it's a thing oh boy! Exactly. Also, I want to know, you know, for my audience and for my listeners, because people are probably thinking about the same thing right now in regards to um, what was it like traveling through Europe? You know, because as an American, you know, a lot of Americans haven't stepped outside of the U.S. yet. You know, can you give us a, a, a quick rundown and just going to places, seeing how the roads look like, the culture, the different mm. languages, the food, everything, you know, please tell us some more. Well, um, uh, let me see. I think the, the in Eastern Europe, I really was in awe of Prague. Um, mm. 
a Czech Republic. Um, I felt like as we were, as the bus was approaching the, the, the city, it was like, I felt like, okay, when's the carriage going to pull over and get us? It's like you're in a kingdom of itself, <laughs> you know, and stuff the the architecture, the buildings, it's, it's like a life-size museum, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like a museum, of, but itself, there's a lot of history, I'm sure that I, you know, that I have yet to learn, but just the visual imagery that I saw is just, I was just in awe, you know, of the, of the, the again, like I said, the building, um, the, the roads, the, the little details in the, in the architecture of the building, uh, buildings and, um, and the people are fairly, um, you know, are very friendly. I met actually, ironically, I, I went to a restaurant. I just walked on my own, you know, that the tour allow us to have our, our own time, our personal time outside mm -hmm. of them showing us specific um, important sites. Um, and so, so I was, I just started walking and uh, I asked, I went in like I thought was a restaurant, but it was a bakery. So I said, I'd really love to to go to a to eat at a, um, uh, an actual like a restaurant where I can really experience, you know, the food and 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 uh, and uh, just the restaurant scene of of Prague, you know. So he directed me to this one restaurant, and the waitress just happened to have been in Kauai, in my island, like the year prior. And so, <laughs> so that was really sweet, yeah. So, um, so she was very helpful in in uh, in suggesting um, a dish that she she grew up like loving when her grandmother, you know, it's like a goulash di dish and stuff. So, so that was really nice um, and, and delicious. And then um, just to um, another country that I was fascinated on is Austria. Mm -hmm. So I attended, um, I went to a, a, a concert, uh, a, a chamber concert orchestra um, in Vienna. And so that was nice. You don't go to Austria, especially in Vienna, without attending supposedly one of their chamber concert, you know, concerts and stuff. So that was kind of nice. Um, and then um, we also went to... Um, uh, Lake Monsi in Austria and the church. There's the church there were the sound of music. Uh, the wedding scene in the sound of music was filmed. And I was just really in awe. The entire time I felt like I was in a dream. Like I just saw this in movies, you know, like yeah. I'm actually here, you know, it was like so surreal. And so, and the lake was beautiful. The fall colors too is amazing. So to me, I didn't mind because like people would ask me like, oh, so is the weather? Is that the right time? Why didn't you go in the summertime? You know, what, when the place was packed with <laughs> visitors? No, I think the fall was fabulous because um, the change of colors, the just the fall colors was just totally amazing, you know, and, and, and it, and the towns, the, the places were not as crowded, you know, so that was kind of nice. So, and of course, Switzerland, that's in the Eastern Europe, everywhere, actually. I don't think I have a favorite. I think they're all my favorites, you know. Um, I think it's just each each country has, you know, has uh, their own um, beauty, its own character and stuff. So um, it's any, I, I think people should look into that Um uh, look at countries like that where don't expect I think no ex I always tell the, uh, my girlfriends you know like the, this favorite saying of mine is no expectations no mm. disappointment you know if you don't expect too much then you don't you're not disappointed then just go let let it flow let let you know see how things will progress you know as you go along you know and stuff it might not be what you'd hope it to be, but you learn from it, you know, if, if, if it didn't work out the way you want, but, but, uh, you know, it's just Switzerland is, is of course, it's beautiful, you know, so, um, 
you know, get to see the Alps, the uh, go up to the top of the mountains and 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 see the just the the beautiful uh, scenery and the lakes. Um, yeah, so um, uh, it, you know, and then the Italy is a different kind of kind of uh, demographics and 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 environment, uh, you know, scenery and and the temperature is is slightly better, you know, different culture, uh, as you know, uh, you know, with the Italians and and um, but um, uh, what I like about the tour is that also is that uh, I felt safe. The tour guides are with us, uh, are with the tours, and they also keep an eye out on the passengers. Like they always warn the 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 visitors, the tourists about uh, the pickpocketers, you know, sure. which is a problem in some areas and stuff. And and they would always like uh, make sure that they they're um, reminding us, you know, all the time, like okay, watch out. And, and they know they know what to look for so they know when to warn us if they feel like we might encounter some danger or you know uh, be a victim if, or we would be uh, prone to being you know to to having encountering pickpocketers and stuff like that so so that's kind of nice because if I was on my own like really like solo uh -huh. you know those are the things that that you know I may not I may overlook you know, and 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 um, definitely, I'd be lost <laughs> if I was on my own on my own, <laughs> hopping from one, one train to another. <laughs> huh? It's just one of those things where I always think about it. Um, you made a really good point here, um, in regards to when you're traveling, like you just gotta have an open mindset, you know, not to have too much high or big expectations about what to expect. I kind mm -hmm. of went over with an open mind, knowing that hey, you know, my expectations not going to be too high whatsoever. But nevertheless, I want to make sure that I come here and just see what life has to offer. And I think each and every country has its own beauty and own intakes. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want my audience members to realize and understand this here. Um, and that's part of traveling, you know, traveling with mm -hmm. the with the openness of knowing not to, you know, you can't have everything all planned out whatsoever. And it's beautiful just to hear from you. Um, and again, for those who didn't get it in the beginning, um, I'm going to have all this information in a drop down below, guys. You can reach out to Miss Sally about this follow-up information. Um, so please hit the like, the subscribe button um, so you can get more of these content because a lot of these contents are coming in, guys. It's some really key, valuable information for those who want to travel all around the world. And you feel as if you're stuck or you feel as if you, know, you can't do it alone, you're too afraid. This is something to listen to here. Miss Sally has all the information for you here. And this is something about having that courage within yourself and realizing that, hey, um, this is pretty cool. And we're actually going to do a part two session of this video. Um, this is a part one right now. The part two session is going to include more females who are actually on board so you can get their intakes about the following right there. There are people out there who are doing these things, going out there, traveling alone um, as much as as, fun, as much fun it can have whatsoever and I think it's something really really cool to jump on board about the following Miss Sally um, yeah yeah I met uh, a lot of, uh, of travelers from Australia from Singapore um, Guatemala uh, Shanghai it's amazing Malaysia um, oh. you know it's just uh, I've developed a, a, a wealth of of uh, friendships you know uh it's it's to this day like i said we we uh communicate with each other through the internet and you know chinese new years i greeted them happy chinese new years and you know that we just it's it's amazing I, i'm really happy that um that uh i met so many wonderful people um who who love to travel as much as i do and uh, some and in all ages, some of them are like college students that were just like um, uh, student uh, foreign students, you know. Uh, they're Chinese, they're from China, and they were in Scotland, let's say. And so, um, yeah, it's it's a very rewarding experience for me, you know. And uh, um, and that's just it's so exciting to hear this, honestly, um, because I think. Traveling is like the gateway to the world. 
Mm -hmm. uh, because you never really know what's out there unless you actually go out there and see it for yourself. Um, you can read books about it. You can look at TikTok or Instagram videos. But unless you're there in person, that gives you a whole different perspective. That's something I want you guys to understand here for, for a quick second. I'm in this cell actually here in Frankfurt, Germany. All right. And just happened to be there during the time that she was here. We just had a little slight conversation and she was just telling me about the experience that she had traveling around Europe. I'm like, who'd you travel with? And she said, No one we. I'm like, what? All by yourself? You know, so that basically just gave me a sense of motivation. Okay, listen, I'm a young man. I need to get out there also do the same thing. You know, not expecting anyone to wait for me whatsoever. Like she said earlier, guys, life's too short. You know, so if you have the opportunity to get up and do something and travel the world and see things, do not postpone it whatsoever. You know, at some point, you know, you look back at those moments and realize, man, it was really cool going through Switzerland, looking at the Alps, or being in Italy, going through the gondola, or just being in Prague, Czech Republic. Because these are the things that you look back at. It's like, man, I'm really happy I did that. You know, even though it was scary. But I did it, and that's the beautiful thing about it. So get up, go out there and travel, guys. Life's too yep. short. Yep. Live a great story. I saw that, like a sticker, or you know, and and I live by that. I'm living like hopefully a great story, you know. So. And then think about that story as your book. Um, I remember when I when I studied abroad in Spain. You know, when I did my undergrad, we had an opportunity because I studied in international business and we had to do a semester abroad in Spain and some, some of my colleagues at the time being did a semester abroad in London some did a semester abroad in, in Peru uh, and my group we did a semester abroad in Madrid Spain mm -hmm. you know and I remember when I booked my flight to go to Spain it was scary I'm gonna be honest with you because mm -hmm. one I've traveled through Europe I stopped by Europe but I've never actually gotten out of the outside the airport to see how Europe really looks like. I've seen all these movies and stuff. You know, I'm just that kid from Mid Midwest, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So This episode of Next Gen Talk is proudly sponsored by Allen Small Business Solutions. Are you ready to transform your business mindset? Fall in love with your prospect problems, not your solutions, all programs. Visit allensmallbusinesssolution.com and use the promo code NEXTGENTALK an exclusive discounted consultation. But wait, there's more. The funds from this ad will go straight to supporting Peter Beckham and his daughter during their challenging health journey. If you'd like to lend a helping hand, head over to Next Gen Talk Facebook page and contribute to the GoFundMe campaign. Now back to your interview with Sally Cravens as she shares her insights on solo travel throughout Europe. Booked that flight, this was like in January. You know, and it was blizzard snowing back in Columbus, Ohio. You know, I remember I took a flight <laughs> from Columbus to Minneapolis, Minnesota, and it was even more blizzard over there. It's like, man, how's this plane going to get out of here with all the snow? This happened to be our flight was in cancel whatsoever. I took a flight from Minneapolis all the way to um to Paris, Charles de Gaulle. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, okay, this is Paris, Paris. I'm in Europe now, but the thing about that is like, I'm still in the airport, you know, I'm still mm -hmm. hearing people speaking French, you know, English everywhere, you know, show your American, American passport whatsoever. I had to take another plane from Paris to Madrid. So when I got to Madrid, I was like, okay, this is it. What did I get myself into? <laughs> you know, I got my suitcase with me here. I got an address that I got to show up at because I, I had to stay with a host mom. But I'm looking around me like, how do I get here? I don't know how to take the taxis. I don't know how to get on the public transportation. I did not prepare for none of that stuff. And you there's know, the I challenge of language. There's yeah, the exactly. challenge of language too. The, language. <laughs> well, the thing about the language side of things, I took Spanish for a couple of years. So I knew Spanish. I know how to conversate in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And that kind of helped me out a little bit because I was able to talk to the taxi driver. I said, ven aquí, ven aquí, por favor, esta casa, esta es mi educación. You know, I just talked to them everything else, and they took me there straight. I got to the house, and I realized, man, I'm here now. Okay, I need to let my parents and family members know that I'm in Germany. I'm in, I'm in um, Spain. And before I realized, I'm so jet-lagged. I call back home. They're still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I completely forgot about the times, though. I'm thinking, oh, man, I'm like six hours ahead of, you know, these guys are still sleeping. They're still laying in bed. They're not going to pick up the phone. 
So I call some of my classmates. They already landed. They were there like a day ahead. You know, they already figured out all the metro cars. I'm still trying to figure out how to unpack my suitcase and just trying to get my head all wrapped up, you know, like seeing all these taxis and stuff. But it wasn't until we got there and I saw all my colleagues and everyone doing the same thing. And we're just traveling all these places around Spain, you know, going to Barcelona, Sevilla, Malaga, Granada. And it just opened up my whole eye and the experience just to travel alone, just to see what it means to have that culture experience. And I look back at that moment and I realized that moment was a key factor that allowed me to be the person that I am today, being able to actually move outside the United States and living mm -hmm. here in Frankfurt, Germany, doing the things that I'm currently doing as we speak. And the mm -hmm. reason for that, because I got that experience at an early stage. And that experience gave me the pivot to step outside of my comfort zone and do things out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. I have pictures around of my office right now, the student that I'm currently in right now, shooting this video of that moment, because to this day, I still have friends. We talk about these moments when we go to all these trips, all these places, the bus ride we miss, you know, walking around, seeing a bunch of American people asking us all kinds of questions about politics, about this, about that, you know, going out. And it's a beautiful thing, guys. And I think that's something that everyone, if you have the opportunity to travel, you know, even if it's just going out of town, even if it's just getting in a car, driving down the street, going someplace, just be in motion. Because mm -hmm. I think life is designed for us to travel. And I think we're made to travel as human beings, we're not made to be all stagnant and stay in one place and think things are just going to happen just like that. And I'm mm -hmm. really happy to have you on board here, Miss Sally, because your story itself resonates. You know, I want women of all color, of all age. There is no age limit here. <laughs> no. There is no age limit. So for those of you who are thinking, I'm going to do it when I'm this age or when I'm that, when I have everything all figured out, you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and the one thing to remember, though, is in the bus tours, it's pretty fast paced. Um, and you will be, you need to be mobile in a way, you know, you have to walk with the tour. Uh, but that's, you know, you can stay if you want to, you can do your own thing because they tell you like, okay, meet us at this spot at this time. So you can either follow the tour guide to the points of interest that they're going to lead you to, or um, go do your thing as long as you are back on that spot on that time, because once they board the bus, they take off to the next thing. So that's how it is. I didn't mind because I'm a walker. I run marathons or have run marathons and stuff. But there were other ladies there that, you know, right, right about my age that, you know, I heard them say, oh, gosh, you know, we are, we're going to walk again, more walking, you know, and stuff. So just keep that in mind that you need to be. So that's why you need to do that at an earlier age if you feel that you're not going to be able to later on in, in life, you know, or not that kind of a tour, at least. Sure, you can still travel and don't stop. Don't let that, you know, hinder your real want, wanting to travel, you know, because you you still can do it at your at your own pace or at your own terms or what have you. I just chose to be on this in this tour because again, like I said, I wanted to see as many places as I can on the time that I'll be there. And I felt that by being with the tour tour that they know where to go. I don't have to worry about getting lost, you know, and, and the package deals were actually very reasonable, you know, and stuff in my in my opinion, you know, because it includes the the, the lodging, the accommodation and breakfast in and all every day. And um and so, you know, it's 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 a wonderful experience. It's something that I, I'll do again, you know, I'll I'll do another week someplace probably. Maybe. And I'll probably do the same thing. People are saying, well, didn't you want to stay in one place for like a week, you know, the entire in one city? You know, sure, it's good to see, do that. But I, to me, I want to see as many places as I can. And actually, they actually went to the places that I would have wanted to go anyways. Like when we went to Italy, you know, I wanted to see if I was going to go to Italy, I was going to see, I would have liked to have seen, yes, the places that we actually went, like Rome, the Colosseum, Vatican, Pisa, Italy and Tower of Pisa, you know, Tuscany. Yeah. Um, uh, Milan, which by the way, Milan to me and, and Venice is, it's okay. You know, um, 
it's it shops to me. It's shopping is paradise. <laughs> You know, and other than the gondola in Venice, it's a lot more shopping, you know, and, and yes, there's a couple of cathedrals in both places. And so, but, um, it, you know, those are the places that probably next next time I'm in Italy, I don't need to be in those places because I would like to see other places. I went to Verona. I went uh, on my own also visited a friend for, for four days in Italy, in Trentino uh, area. Were uh, and then she and I uh, went to. I said, I want to see the Ju Juliet's um, balcony, you know, Romeo and Juliet's balcony in Verona. So, so Absolutely. we went there. <laughs> we took the train there and stuff, and so, so that was kind of neat, you know, to see that in person. Where again, I've only seen in movies, you know, and stuff. So, yeah. You have like a, you have like an album where you like collect all these like pictures of moments of places you've been in Europe. Just look back through and scroll the people you yeah. met, the people you met, and then it just happened to be like the best friends for life you ever met. Oh, I'm actually in the process of creating a web uh, website. Yeah, nice. on, on, on my website of my travels and stuff. So, um, yeah, so I'm yet to put it together and starting to kind of you know uh, reminisce back on the times that I was there, what I've experienced. It's mainly going to be photos. You know, because to me the visual thing is more important, and some some information about it. But I think people get excited more, like to see the actual photos and like, oh my gosh, you know, that's great. You know, I want to see that too. You know, and stuff. And so, um, you know, Paris in the at night where you see the flickering Eiffel Tower. I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> I just like, I just feel really, really blessed that I was able to experience it. You know, and 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 I again highly recommend to to women that um, don't be afraid. Um, you know, uh, it's not it's not um, it's not scary. Anyways, you know, I mean, and and try to because like I've seen comments from from um, solo travelers uh, pages, uh, social media deals that oh um, I felt so lonely. You know, like like they felt so all alone and lonely, like they want to go back home and stuff. I said, no, go out. <laughs> Don't stay at the hotel or the, the resort where you're at. You know, to me, you got to find right. something to do, find something to do. Right. You know? right. I mean, you're in a two, foreign country. There's so much to see, you know, and stuff. You but, move. You yeah. Move. Like whatever it's in there. That's the, I think, oh, man, I had a couple of friends who were doing the same thing. They were just like, okay. I live in this country. I mean, I'm here in this country right now where there's nothing to do. I don't know where to go, who to talk to. Well, Google it. Ask people around and go on Facebook groups. Look for things, you know. Send messages. I mean, be careful now. You know, don't put yourself out there too much now. Be careful to go to safe places at night or through the daytime whatsoever. <laughs> but the idea is just to look up some sightseeing places. You want to move, you know, because like you said, you don't want to stay in a hotel room and just watch TV all day, watch Netflix. What's the whole point of that? You can do that at home. Mm. You might just get up, go for a walk, or go someplace to go see something, you know, or just take a taxi somewhere. Because that's the yeah. whole idea. If there was time where you don't feel like doing something, you actually did it, and you realize, man, I'm glad I got up and actually see what's happening over there. And I went to this concert, or I went to see this person play, or this event, you know. Mm. And it's it's a beautiful thing, guys. It's really a really beautiful or museums. Thing. There are free museums, yeah. in places like Ireland. The National Museum there, I believe, is free. So we, and and the transportation in Europe is so, it's, it's so really efficient. easy. It's, it's so really, easy. Everything is really connected. Everything is really close to each other. Um, it's not really much of a travel compared to the states, where there's a long distance, you know, here and there. But here in Europe, I have to say, the transportation, depending on where you at, you know, all the time when it comes in, it's very efficient. So movement is very easy. Uh, my second second day, my, my second day in Frankfurt, I did not stay in Frankfurt. I went to Heidelberg right away. I took the uh -huh. train. I said, I want to see this castle. I want to see this, you know, so I just look it up and like, oh, and 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 again, oh, another another thing that I did is I, is, is I chose hotels that are near the train station, even though it's, you know, the train station is not really the sometimes the most. Yeah, uh, it, I mean, I it's a little, a it, it's, it's a touch and go, yeah, yeah, 
it's some it's a place where some well, where you'd be better off to stay in at night anyways you know around that yeah. but to me um my 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 goal is is the convenience like i want to be able to just like cross practically cross the street and i'm at the train station you know what i'm saying so and that's what i did is i chose a hotel that's close to frankfurt main station there and yeah i was just like oh okay this is the train that i need to take to heidelberg you know i I, I bought a pass already, like, a, you know, there's an amount that you buy on the, on the rail pass, you know, and stuff. So I just used that and I went to, to Heidelberg for the day. And so, again, here I am in a foreign country, never done such Amazing. a thing. And <laughs> just, just do it, you know, and stuff. And just, you know, there's, you, you, you can't really make a mistake because if you do, you can ask questions, you know. Someone will always be willing to help you. And so I went and, and ate alone in a nice restaurant in Heidelberg. You know, I mean, I don't mind doing that. I think people sometimes kind of look at you kind of funny when you're eating alone, you know, and stuff or ladies they're, or they're expecting like a guy or someone else to join you. <laughs> I've seen that in like, I've seen that in, in some, sometimes I've sensed that in restaurants, like I, I'll sit alone and I'll, I think they were looking back to see whether someone is following me or like a second person will sit next to me and I'm just there by myself and I eat my breakfast, you know, and stuff. And it was just like, I'm okay with that, you know. That's yeah, true. so. <laughs> it's courageous of you. That's amazing just to hear that uh, for women. I know a lot of women are a bit afraid of that experience to be alone in a foreign country. Mm -hmm. um, and they think, you know, again, a lot of things happen out there and I can, I can understand 100%. You know, um, just to let them know, okay, you want to go places that are safe. You, know, you want to be careful also. Um, mm. you know, that you put yourself out there in a position that's not quite safe whatsoever. Um, make mm -hmm. sure to do your research beforehand where you're going and let people know where you're going. So that time, if anything happens whatsoever, you're in the right mm -hmm. just place at the right. I mean, things will be taken care of for you whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's really amazing, Miss Sally, and I really want to thank you so much for being on board in the Next Generation Business Talk. Honestly, uh, guys, thank you so much for this. This is a really special episode that I want to talk about with traveling, and this is part one, guys. I'm also going to do part two here, so hit the like button, subscribe, share. This is how I'm able to do the following information and have more content, more people like Miss Sally on board to talk about their experience all around the world that they're currently doing. I also have these t-shirts behind me here, guys. This is the alpha t-shirts that I'm currently displaying here, all right? I will have the following on the website at the nextgenerationbusinesstalk.com. You can actually purchase this t-shirt for work guide purposes, whatever what situation it might be. And I also have hoodies and everything that goes along with the following for the Next Generation Business Talk, guys. And before I get, before I get any full, before I go any further, excuse me, with the following content, do um, you have any last words you wanna share with us here, Miss Sally? Well, um, all I can say is that um, don't be afraid. Again, we've already discussed that, you know. Uh, I think fear is, and fear itself is that is there's a saying like that, you know. So, so don't, don't, uh, don't stop doing things that, uh, that you'd like to do, that you've been dreaming to do just because of that uh, fear that's over your head. Just, just look at it with an open mind you know, seize the day, as they said, you know, carpe diem, seize the day. Um, our, our day is is uh, limited in this earth, you know, we, we're, um, we, need, we need to leave it as if it was our last, you know, the, the day of our lives. So that's how I live my life. And so, um, you know, I'm not done yet. So I'm planning on traveling more. And uh, we will be sharing the, the link of the bus tours that I that I took, and so uh, I would uh, uh, recommend that you guys check that out because it's very, uh, it's very. I, I felt that it was a very nice tour that I did, you know, and very um, informative. the The tour guides are informative and stuff, and and keep on traveling. So Absolutely. that's all I can say. And may I ask one question? What's the number twenty five there um, on sure. your shirt? Sure. Yeah. Great question. So I'm an athlete. I'm a soccer player. So the number that I play with is my jersey number, right? The number 25. You know, I always had that jersey number since I played for the U.S. youth teams, um, MRL. So 25 has always been a passion. It's always been a number that I always had within my heart. Um, mm -hmm. 
just my luck, my lucky number, you know, 25, 25, 25. And, and always, trying to look at what it said on the orange one too. What what does it train train like a champion? Okay. Train like a champion. Um honestly, this is my logo here as a as a soccer player myself. Um mm. the idea is just to resonate what I am, what I stand for here, and the things that I do on a consistent basis, guy. And if you're training, if you're traveling, do it like a champion, whatever situation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Here. Very um, nice. Resonate that and sell that to my audience member, let them know, hey, this is a guy who's real authentic, real. And talk to real people who are actually doing real things out there. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and just to wrap things up here, guys, we're going to have all the following information on the drop down below. You know, hit that like button, subscribe. Uh, all the information regarding Miss Sally's traveling on board. Um, like she said earlier, it's very, very important to understand that life is too short. Nothing is guaranteed tomorrow. So, in the meantime, if you have an opportunity to do something, do it. Don't think too much about it. Just get up and move and do it. You know, you look back at that moment and realize that because of the fact that you got up and did it, and it opened yeah. up new doors and opportunities for you. New people are going to walk into your life. New blessings are going to guide you throughout the whole journey. And you realize, like, man, it wasn't as bad as I thought because this whole time my mind's been playing tricks with me. I didn't really quite understand nor realize the importance of actually traveling. So don't yeah. let the age limit stop you from moving forward. <laughs> nope. That's one thing a lot of people tend to say, okay, I'm too old. I'm going to wait to this. Don't wait. Just do it. And if mm -hmm. you have the opportunity, the chance to do something, just get up and do it. All right. Yeah. This or don't say, cool. don't say later on, like, I wish I could have yeah. done this. No, no don't, don't wait. To do that. Them, what a situation might be. Just do it. That's what I'm going to say here. You know, and I'm going to put a caption on this episode, actually. Just do it. Travel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. And and by yeah. the way, I highly suggest to your listeners to really share your your uh, site here, just because I find you very inspirational. Uh, you. you know, I, I admire you that that you're looking for ways to um, to network people with each other, you know, share your uh choose uh, um, people that you, you talk to that hopefully can share something with your viewers that, that will hopefully improve their lifestyles or uh, their knowledge, you know, and stuff. And that's important nowadays. I think people, younger people need to have a mentor like you that they can um, they can look up to. I, I, I know I teach middle schoolers, <laughs> teens. And so um, I can only hope that um, at my age that I could be of somewhat of a mentor to them. But, um, you know, um, I, I, I commend you for, for doing what you're doing, by the way. And thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Again, thank you so much for being on board, Miss Sally. This is part one, guys. Part two is going to come shortly. We're going to have a, a lot more group of women on board. We're going to explain about their story. And talk more about this. Again, yes. I'm your host, Alpha Freeman, and this is the Next Generation Business Talk, guys. Thank you so much. Hit the like, subscribe, share the following content, and we'll be back with more episodes, more exciting comments, more exciting things to share with you guys. Stay blessed and have a wonderful day wherever you're at in the world. If you're from Hawaii or all the way in Germany or Australia, you Aloha. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Much, Thank you. Much love. Thank you. Thank all right. You. Aloha. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Next Gen Talk. We extend our deepest gratitude to Sally Cravens for her invaluable insight into solo traveling year for women, where her wisdom inspired many memorable adventures ahead. As we conclude, we want to reiterate our support for Peter Beckman and his family during this challenging time. Your contributions to GoFundMe campaign will provide much needed relief and hope to Peter and his 28 years old daughter as they navigate their health journey. Remember, your kindness truly makes a difference. Stay tuned for more inspiring conversations on Next Gen Talk, where we empower each other to thrive in every aspect of life. Until next time, take care, stay compassionate, and keep spreading positivity.